In the last video, I made this 3D printed tin bismuth hammer in a 3D printed mold. In this video, we're going to laser etch logos, we're going to attach the handle, and we're going to test out different tapping heads. My name is Eric Stribble. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and The making. Alfred Backpack Hanger. It's sturdy, reliable, versatile, and holds all your stuff. Available in stainless steel and aluminum. Get yours today. The new design and making store now has lure lock squeeze bottles, pilot gel pens, rulers, and other supplies for all your model making needs. Plus, our new custom design and making eco grip blade handles in aluminum, copper, stainless steel, and brass. This video's sponsor is Jigga. It's one of my new manufacturing partners. I create the CAD, I upload it, I specify the material that I want, I pick the vetted supplier that I like, kick off the project and pay, communicate with them if they have any questions, wait for the part to show up, and boom, you get something like this. Check them out for your next project. Jigga.io. Oh, I love saying Jigga. In the first video, you saw me cast a tin bismuth metal part in a 3D printed mold. If you haven't seen that, you can go back and watch that video to get better context of what we're doing here in this video. The first thing we're going to do is print these tapping heads. Uh, the first one I'm going to print is out of a Tough 2000 material. It's very ABS-like. And the second material is going to be this durable resin. And both these resins are from Form Labs, and they make a multitude of different resins. So swap out the build tanks, make sure the build platform is clear, upload the part. And in this case, it's just waiting in the queue, and I just push the button on the machine. I can do this remotely as well. So it's setting up the machine. It's filling the tank automatically, getting things ready, and then it will print the part. I put the other part into the wash tank, and that's come out right now. And that was the first wash, and we're gonna put it into the secondary wash, because I happen to have two tanks, which is really great for this, for cleaning your SLA parts out of the part. It comes, and it's ready. The other part has finished printing and we'll take that off the build platform and we'll snap that into the first cleaning tank and clean that one as well. Once the parts have been cleaned and are dry, then we put them into the cure station and the form labs cure station here has presets for all their different materials so you just select the material you want pop your part in there and it cures it for you so let's clean up that part a little bit and we're going to do that on the smithy mill and lathe combo this is an absolutely essential tool for us in the shop. It's all manual, but it allows us to drill holes in the middle of something, turn apart, whether it's metal or plastic, and basically do a little bit of cleanup and machining. Absolutely fantastic piece of kit. Uh, I highly recommend getting a lathe if it's something you can afford. This is from the 80s. It's nothing fancy, but allows us to do basic machining whether it's on metal or plastic like this, and we're just putting in a 45 degree chamfer here to soften up that edge. Let's clean up the hammerhead. This is what we cast in the 3D printed mold out of tin bismuth, and I'm using a hacksaw blade here to trim off the poor sprue and the vents from the hammerhead part i clamp it into a vise with some wood on the side so i don't mar the surface and then we'll clean up the marks that are left with a file to 
smooth that out and make it nice. When I design this, I put the vents and the sprue on the bottom of the part so that they're not visible from the top. And so this is where the handle will go in here. So you really won't see these. I clean these up with a file. The tin bismuth is relatively soft and on these really fine files, it can gum up the files a little bit, but it's very easy to clean them out with a file um, brush. And then I'm gonna clean up the ends here. There's a tiny bit of flash. This is where the tapping heads screw into but very easy to clean that up and make it flat with a, a file here. This is a handle from a company called House Handle. All they make are wooden tool handles. How they can stay in business at their low prices is astounding to me. I'll include a link. And of course, Ace is there on the floor. He's supervising. I've got the handle to fit. And I'm putting a little bit of clay on the bottom so that when I pour in my epoxy here, it doesn't leak out the bottom. So I just aligning the head and I've mixed up some five minute epoxy and I'm going to pour that in there to lock the part in place. And of course, I've got the whole tapered so that locks everything in and we'll let this epoxy kind of cure up. And once it does, we should be all set. I just use a file to clean up the top here. If the things were to get loose, then I could always put in the metal wedge that comes with the handle. But for right now, I think we're good. We'll see over time uh, how the hammer holds up and if it needs something like that. We got a new fiber laser in the shop. And this is from Hans Maker. They actually make bigger industrial kind of lasers. And then this is their first foray into sort of a tabletop fiber laser. This is the F1 Pro that they've sent to us to evaluate and use in the shop. It's a really nice fiber laser, much better than the fiber laser we had before. I have a video about that not happy with that laser as an example this is the protective eyewear that comes with it and it fits over a regular pair of glasses this is the kind of detail attention to detail that they have with their product that makes it easier for the user it's all self-contained here with only the power brick on external it connects up easy to our computer it uses light burn, so the software is dead simple, and the results are fantastic. Easily lasers this piece of tin bismuth. We've tried it on several other pieces of metal, and the results are consistent and predictable and very repeatable and give a really nice finish. Now the tin bismuth is pretty soft, it leaves a little texture here. It's actually kind of nice, very readable. Highly recommend. I'll leave a link below to the site. So if you're interested in a fiber laser, this is something that I definitely recommend uh, as we are very happy with this fiber laser so far and using a light burn with it. It's really made etching metal much much easier and more enjoyable compared to the unit that we had before so I'm very positive about this machine so far and it's really nice to have that in the shop as well let's assemble the two tapping heads on the right is the durable material on the left is the tough 2000 a little bit more of an abs type material so these heads should be more than durable enough to act as light tapping heads for tapping different things into place the hammer has some nice weight um, and these materials should serve well for that and of course there's a myriad of other materials that form lab has or we could even 3d print with 
a different process. They screw right in, no issues there. We tighten that up on the one side and it will pop in the one on the other side. And so they're replaceable as well, of course. If they do wear out or break or get deformed or we want to use a different material, we can just print another one. And that's sort of the beauty of this system with this hammer. All in all, the hammers come out really nice. I think the handle maybe could be a slight bit larger. It's tough to tell that until you have it attached to the head of your hammer. Um, but really happy with how it came out and it's going to be sort of in between this ball peen hammer and this big brass hammer on the right in terms of weight um, but of course it has these you know plastic soft heads on them so great as a tapping mallet for knocking things loose and aligning things so for example here in the lathe we want to tap on this tube to get it centered the best that we can with the gauge we've got minimal run out at this point by tapping it back and forth to get it in the jaws correctly so we can do some basic machining on it and in this case I'm just squaring up the ends surfacing those uh, rough edges that were cut with a hacksaw previously get it square so that next time I need to use this piece of material it's ready to go Again, this is on the Smithy lathe mill and the tapping hammer comes in great for this, right? Because that chuck can really clamp down on a metal thing and it can be hard to remove. So the tapping hammer is great for something like that as well. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Make sure to hit the bell so you get notifications every time I have a new video. Don't forget to follow me on social media at Bots and Design. I'm now on Blue Sky and unfortunately still on Instagram. Rock on. Don't forget to check out the t-shirts and hoodies in the merch shelf below. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.